Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the de December edition of the Staff Wellness and Health Booster Sessions. Our topic this month is managing holiday stress. My name is Chad Saxon, Communication Specialist with Shared Health, and I will be the moderator for today's session. Our presenter today is Carmel Watson, Organizational Assistance Specialist with Blue Cross Manitoba. We will get to Carmel in a few seconds, but we have a little bit of housekeeping items to go through first. So as we all know, this has been a time of great change in our world. We have been forced to adjust how we conduct ourselves in the workplace, our homes, and with our social connections. These changes can sometimes feel overwhelming. To support the mental health and wellness of the health system workers and the public at large, Mental Health and Addictions Shared Health has brought together skilled trainers from across the province to facilitate several booster sessions. In today's presentation, we will discuss stress and the holidays. While the holiday session is meant to, be, to bring feelings of love and cheer, we know it can also bring a lot of stress for many. In this session, we will learn some tips on, and tools excuse me, on how to get through the season without the overwhelming stress and perhaps look forward to starting the new year refreshed. As I mentioned, our presenter is Carmel Watson. Carmel has acquired over 20 years of clinical experience while working in the nonprofit, health and government sectors. She is experienced in providing individual, group and family therapy as well as crisis intervention. Carmel is also a well-established presenter of mental health and well-being topics and is skilled at consulting with senior leaders in the, in the development of solutions to support the wellness goals of many organizations. She completed her Master of, Master of Marriage and Family Therapy degree at the University of Winnipeg and is a member of the Canadian Association of Marriage and Family Therapy. Following today's presentation, we'll have a few minutes for questions. Also, today's session is being recorded and will be made available as a streaming video on demand on Shared Health's Mental Health Resources page. And with that, I will turn things over to Carmel. Thank you so much, Chad. Uh, there's probably a few things that, I'll, that I had as a repeat that you already shared, but that's okay. Thank you so much. And uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the presentation on managing holiday stress. Um, as Chad said, my name is Carmel Watson, and I work for Manitoba Blue Cross in a position called Organizational Assistance Specialist. Uh, so again, as was already mentioned, um, my background consists of working in a nonprofit organization, um, in private practice, within healthcare, and more recently within uh, the federal government. I do have a master's degree in marriage and family therapy, and most of my work has been in clinical settings as a therapist. Um, more recently, I joined Manitoba Blue Cross to work with the leaders of organizations to promote mental health and well-being for all employees. Um, I'm hoping that we have a combination of leaders and employees in the session today, as I, I truly believe that we need to change the dynamics of how we talk about mental health and how we take care of ourselves. So this, this often does start with leaders to take the first step and to role model this change. Um, now, Manitoba Blue Cross is proud to be your provider for employee assistance services, and we provide a wide range of services. Uh, most people know about the counseling services. We also offer critical incident debriefings, presentations like this, and a service that we started during the pandemic called um, Connect Now. Now, if you haven't heard of Connect Now, I just want to tell you a little bit about it. Um, it's a service that provides immediate access to mental health professionals without the need for an appointment. So the service is free and for those with EAP benefits, um, calls to the service do not count towards sessions under your benefit plan. Now the service is intended to provide immediate support for concerns that are brief in nature. And the reason why I wanted to quickly share this with you all today is that this service can be very helpful during the holiday season when we might be feeling more stressed and short on time. So even though it was created during the pandemic, uh, it continues to be available for anybody who's looking for somebody to speak to right away. And as Chad said, you know, the holiday season is meant to bring feelings of love and cheer, but it also stirs up a lot of feelings uh, of stress for many people. And so I, I do wanna also say that when we're talking about the holidays, we're, of course, we are talking about Christmas, that's the most popular one, but we're also talking about Hanukkah, New Year's, Chinese New Year's, Ramadan and Eid, Kwanzaa, St. Lucia's Day, Ukrainian Christmas is really big in, uh, in Manitoba. So just to name a few. Um, 
Now, I want to mention that I'm new to using this specific platform for presenting, and I'm feeling a little bit nervous about that. So please be patient with me as I navigate how to interact with the group. Uh, and thank you to Chad and Shared Health for supporting me with this process and inviting me to present today. Um, so I will call on Chad a few times to, uh, to help out if needed or to answer um, or share some comments that I'm going to invite you to share in the chat. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the agenda for today. Um, and Chad, please interrupt me if something's not going smoothly. Let me know if the PowerPoint's not sharing, but uh, hopefully we tested it out and it's working. Okay. Um, so the agenda for today, we're gonna talk about who experiences holiday stress, the impacts holiday stress can have on us, the most common causes of holiday stress, and lastly, we'll review some tips to manage this holiday stress. So I'd like to start with checking in with people about the things that they're looking forward to during the holidays. So please share, like I said, I, I believe there's a chat function there. So please share in the chat, what traditions, foods, or experiences do you love about the holiday season? So I'm gonna give you a couple of moments here to write in the chat, and then maybe I'll ask Chad if you could read out some of the comments, cause I can't see that uh, chat, that would be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we have uh, some coming in. Uh, time off work was noted. Great. Seeing family and friends I haven't seen over the last couple of years. Time with time spent with family, turkey dinners, vacation time. That's all good. Time off work and uh, additional time with the family again mentioned. So yeah, lots of uh, similar themes yeah. there. And those are a, a lot of common ones that I hear about too. So time with family, great food, presents. Yes, time off work if that's if that's available to people. So thank Christmas, you. Christmas baking oh. was mentioned. That's always popular. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, now let's talk about what you find stressful during the holidays. So are there things that you dread or that you often realize um, cause you stress during the holidays. So once again, feel free to write in the chat. I'll get Chad to read some of those answers out. Yeah. Finances is mentioned. I, I know that uh, <laughs> having two young kids, that's definitely a concern in our household. Uh, we see uh, uh, food, family, too busy having to rush to visit everyone that's always a challenge for sure getting everything ready for everyone to enjoy while you prepare it all uh, as much as you love them family that uh, can obviously <laughs> be a bit of a stressor uh, no time off work when it feels like everyone else does definitely understand that for people and trying to get everything done before christmas and feeling too busy Absolutely. Those are, um, I have my little list of ones that, well, we'll see that as we move on. But yeah, usually it's about how busy people feel, money, overeating. Again, seeing family members maybe we don't get along with, uh, too much alcohol or, or maybe some poor behavior as a result. So that can be listed as one of them. So thank you all for sharing. So let's let's talk about who experiences holiday stress and and i have a feeling that this information will will probably be no surprise to most of you more than 80 percent of us find the holiday season to be somewhat or very stressful so typically uh, typically more women than men experience an increase in stress leading up to the holidays this is likely because women tend to take on most of the holiday related burdens including shopping and planning the holiday meals um, I would also suggest that single parents feel an even higher level of stress at this time of year because they are doing everything. Uh, across different classifications of employed adults, healthcare workers are most likely to be worried about working long hours in the upcoming holiday season. As frontline workers, many healthcare professionals cannot stay home over the holidays as most people do. Um, however, you know, clocking into work during the holidays is not always um, the only cause of work-related stress for healthcare workers. There's also an increase in demand for healthcare services over the holidays. I'm wondering if you've all noticed that yourselves, you know, working in healthcare, does it seem to always be busier than usual during the holidays? I hear that a lot. 
Um, so healthcare workers and nurses in particular uh, regularly deal with many sources of stress. We know there's understaffing, high patient to nurse ratios, and, and witnessing difficult situations, just to name a few. So on top of these everyday stressors, um, as you can guess, female nurses face heightened stress as the holiday season approaches, stemming from their role as both women and frontline workers combined with those, those societal expectations, um, such as socializing, hosting, gift giving. Um, so there's a lot of pressure. Uh, and lastly, uh, you can see on the slide, as you can guess, retail workers also express an increase in stress over the holidays. Uh, Chad and I were just chatting, you know, Manitoba Blue Cross is right by Polo Park and uh, it's a very busy time of year. And if I go in there on my lunch, it's, uh, it's overwhelming. And so, you know, these employees are super busy and shoppers are not always on their best behavior as they fight through the crowds to complete their shopping. Well, let's look at the impacts of holiday stress. So how does this stress play out for us? Perhaps you'll recognize some of these symptoms in yourself, in your loved ones or your coworkers. So uh, let's take a look and, and maybe make note for ourselves if we're noticing these things. Headaches, inability to sleep, exhaustion, an upset stomach, dissatisfaction or decline in work performance, irritability, so now we might, we might all experience one or more of these symptoms from time to time. However, I'm gonna encourage you, like I said, to, to, to reflect on whether or not you've experienced an increase of these symptoms lately. You might not even realize that it could be stress that is responsible. So, so now's a good time to take a step back, ask if holiday stress could have something to do with it. Maybe even reflect on previous years, right? Does, um, do you always notice that around this time of year you're really tired or does your partner say that to you like hey you know you're always kind of grumpy at this time of year and so we might be able to connect some dots as we take a look at the most common causes of holiday stress um, you all might have some good guesses as to what the most common causes of holiday stress might be uh, and i'm sure again some of them were already mentioned earlier in the chat so let's uh let's take a look at these together not enough time. Here we go. Lack of time is one of the biggest reasons people feel the effects of holiday stress. Um, whether it's a party to attend, a family event, or the multiple celebrations scheduled for your kids. Again, Chad already mentioned having two young kids. It can be really busy. So it's uh, most definitely a busy time of year. Doing too much. So too many activities, even if they're fun activities, can result in too much holiday stress and leave us feeling frazzled. Uh, rather than feeling fulfilled, right? So sometimes too much of a, a good thing is, is stressful. Eating, drinking, and spending too much. So again, these have already been mentioned, but an overabundance of parties and gift-giving occasions lead many people to eat, drink, and be merry, often to excess. The temptation to overindulge in spending, eating rich desserts or consuming alcohol can cause many people the lasting uh, stress of dealing with consequences. So th that could be debt, uh, that could be some weight gain or just not feeling great. You know how we, uh, how many times have we overate either the, the treats or the dinner and been like, oh, I, you know, you don't feel good after that, right? Um, or, you know, there might be some memories of some embarrassing behavior if we drink too much. There is a pressure to create perfection. Um, so commercialism and hype bring a great deal of attention to the holiday season especially as the pressure to give and receive presents increases. And as we see people post their perfect holidays. So I, I, we see this all the time, no matter what sort of, um, whether it's on TV, whether it's social media, you know, uh, it might be images of their perfect looking Christmas tree, the over the top gifts for their kids, the gourmet looking meals um, and cute ideas like matching family pajamas. Now. I wanna say, I am not saying that these things are bad. If that's your thing and you have the time and energy uh, to do that, by all means, go have fun with that. Um, I'm talking to the people who are already feeling exhausted and then they see these images and try to recreate them. We naturally compare ourselves to others and often try to keep up when this may be causing us more damage than good. So it's more about sort of checking in with ourselves do we have the time and energy to do this? Why are we doing it? Is it because something we're enjoying or because we're trying to keep up with what we're seeing? Uh, too much or not enough togetherness. So uh, we mentioned this earlier too, the holidays are a time when 
extended families tend to gather. So while this can be a wonderful thing, um, but even for the most close-knit families, um, we can overdose on togetherness. So making it hard for family members to maintain a, uh, a healthy balance between bonding and alone time. On the flip side, this can be a tough time for many people, especially those who have lost uh, partners or parents as it might remind them of loneliness. So as the world seems to be gathering with family, those who, who may not have family around them uh, and maybe rely more on friends for support can feel deserted and alone. This is a big one um, that we've been talking a lot about here and so not so happy holidays. For many reasons, a lot of people find the holidays to be the most difficult time of the year. So those frequently impacted um, can be introverts, those who have, had, who have suffered a loss, uh, people who have had a difficult holiday experience in the past, and so it, it brings that up for them, and those who have experienced trauma, particularly within a relationship. Um, and there's many reasons, but those are just a few. And so those who don't eager, eagerly anticipate the holidays, um, they end up isolating themselves or surviving by faking it, forcing their way through the demands of holiday parties, shopping and family gatherings, and often become exhausted and spent by the end of it. Um, so as you can imagine, this would feel extremely stressful and often these people feel like something's wrong with them, right? They're for feeling this way and they might not wanna share that with anyone out of fear of being called Scrooge or being you know, looked down upon. So we actually have an entire article written on this topic. If anybody is interested, um, I'd be happy to share, uh, but it's uh, a lot of people have a hard time expressing that out of fear of being judged for, for not being happy when they think that they should be happy at this time of year. Another reason here is seasonal changes. So an often unrecognized uh, problem that comes with the holiday season is actually a byproduct of the season changing from fall to winter. So as daylight diminishes and the weather causes many of us to spend more time indoors, many people are affected by this to some degree. Uh, and it could be a source of stress and unhappiness during a time that people, again, expect that they should be feeling the opposite. They should be feeling happy. Um, and so that can be confusing and frustrating. And of course, um, right now in Manitoba, it's pretty cold. And so there's some big changes. Uh, a work pressures, yeah. So the stress of work can cause havoc during the holidays. So as we already mentioned, and for some extra hours or an increase in demand can lead to many problems. Um, employees get stressed when they can't get enough time off, as well as those times um, when maybe, again, we, not everybody's working a Monday to Friday day or get those stats. Shift work, uh, maybe family gatherings are scheduled during times that you just can't make it. Um, so sometimes, you know, work and celebration just don't mix and that can cause us some stress and disappointment. Okay, so the great thing about holiday stress is that it's predictable, okay? Unlike many other types of negative stress we encounter in life, we, um, you know, we know when the holiday season will begin and end and we can make plans to reduce the amount of stress we experience and the negative impact it has on us. So we're gonna take a look at some tips that you can try to help reduce holiday stress so that it remains at a, hopefully a positive or manageable level rather than an overwhelming one. So the first one here is acknowledge your feelings. So this is the very first step towards caring for your mental health. Be honest with yourself and those who, who care about you, okay? So if you're having a hard time, those emotions are valid and they're trying to communicate something important to you. So honor your feelings by creating some space for them rather than pushing them aside. Um, this might include talking openly with someone you trust about how the holidays really feel for you. I often use uh, the idea of name it to tame it. If any of you have heard that, I, that idea, I, I use it often um, when I was doing therapy with people and I use it for myself a lot, uh, especially when I'm feeling stressed or, in, or when I'm feeling nervous. So you might've noticed I actually did this earlier when I shared that I was feeling a bit anxious and nervous about the presentation today, the way it works is that I acknowledge how I'm feeling. I name it by saying it out loud. And this act allows me to tame it. So when we do this, uh, often people will soften towards us or offer support when we're able to name that and say it out loud, which helps us to tame it. Um, so it can be really helpful in these moments. So acknowledge how you're feeling at this time of year. So plan ahead. So like most things, if we're able to plan ahead, 
we're more likely to, to feel less stressed. It can be helpful to make a list that details everything that needs to be done, activities that are scheduled, and then perhaps you can delegate some of these tasks on your list to other people so it doesn't all land on you. Um, now, I know this sounds ideal, <laughs> and the holidays come at the same time every year, so again, we should know to plan ahead and prepare, and yet it, it can creep up on us some years, and, and I will absolutely admit that that's the case for me this year, and um, you know, I, I find myself scrambling last minute this year, and that doesn't always feel great. Um, however, I'll say the other day I, I sat down, I just took 10 minutes to kind of write down all the things that I still needed to do, and I already feel more relaxed just having that list and kind of checking things off or asking other people, hey, could you do this piece for me? Um, another suggestion might be that you put a reminder or an appointment in your calendar every year at a certain time um, so that you start planning early enough. Maybe that's, you know, some people are early, like September. Um, some people it might be November, but maybe if we have that standing reminder, we might do a better job of planning ahead. Set your priorities. So before you get overwhelmed by too many activities, it's important to decide which traditions offer the most positive impact and eliminate activities that are not top priority. Okay, so for example, if if you usually become overwhelmed by a flurry of baking, um, caroling, I'm not really sure if people still do that or not, but shopping, sending cards, visiting relatives and other activities that, that leave you exhausted by January, you may wanna pick a few activities and really enjoy them while skipping the rest. So same thing, you could write out a list, here's all the things I do every year, which things are really important to me. And maybe again, you can shorten that list, set your priorities. If you can't fathom the idea of skipping out on, uh, on all of the things that you like to do, so whether it's, again, sending cards, baking, seeing people, doing all of the stuff that usually runs you ragged, you might uh, do better including all these activities in your schedule, but on a smaller scale, okay? So that's another option is, uh, you know, maybe send your cards, for example, but again, maybe you decide that, you know, who you send them to. Maybe you only send them to the people that you maintain regular communication with rather than that really long list of people that maybe you haven't seen in five, 10 years. Or, you, you know, you don't include a personal note or letter in each one. You know, you can decide on what that would look like. Um, so just find a way to simplify, okay? The same goes with this idea of baking, okay? Will anybody be upset with you if you only make three different types of sweets rather than six this year? <laughs> you know, so if you find a way to cut corners or tone down the activities that are important to you and your family, you might actually find that you enjoy them much more. Or back to the baking, like, or every year is different, right? If you have time this year, go for it. Next year you don't, it's okay, you do less. So it's a, it's figuring out what's gonna work for you and being able to acknowledge what's stressful and, uh, and what maybe you do have the capacity to do. So this one is change your expectations for togetherness. So with family and friends, it's important to be aware of your limitations. So think back to previous years and try to, try to pinpoint how much togetherness you and your family can take before you start feeling that negative stress. Um, can you limit the number of parties you attend or throw yourself or, or parties that you throw yourself or, um, or even the time that you spend at each one of them? Can you limit your time with family to a smaller time frame that will still feel special and joyous without draining you? So, and there was a hint there earlier about dealing with difficult relatives. It's okay to set limits on what you are and are not willing to do, including foregoing your visits or limiting them to every other year. Um, and for those who experience loneliness during the holiday season, consider, you know, creating your own traditions, inviting a group of friends to your home on a certain day every year. Um, and if almost everyone you know is with family during the holidays, you also could consider volunteering to help those less fortunate than yourself. Um, many people report that these experiences uh, are extremely fulfilling and the focus will be on what you have rather than what you lack. And again, that can be a tradition that you do every year. Let's see, what else do we have here? Be smart with your holiday eating and drinking. So during the holidays, we may wanna look and feel great, especially if um, you know these are people that we don't always see, so we wanna feel our best. Uh, but there's so much temptation in the form of uh, delicious food, decadent desserts and alcohol. So this can throw us off completely from our regular routine. Plus the addition of uh, 
possible emotional stress, right? So this can all add up to overeating, emotional eating, other forms of unhealthy eating and drinking. Now, I do want to say one day of overeating isn't going to cause you to lose all the progress that you've made over the year. Uh, however, it could leave us feeling unwell, right? Like I said earlier, and, and maybe even derail our healthy routines. I know for me, uh, often, you know, if I have a, a day that I'm, yeah, I'm a little bit more free with things, sometimes the next day, it's really hard to get back on track. And uh, so, you know, plan ahead, again, if we can, by being aware of your triggers, do what you can to have some healthy foods at hand for each meal and, and uh, be aware of your intake, both food and alcohol and practice mindful consumption. So if you're concerned that the temptation will be too much for you, ask your partner or friend to keep you accountable. Have a conversation with them beforehand and, and agree on a way that they can gently remind you of your plans to eat and drink within your limits. Of course, you know, you, you wanna have that conversation beforehand because if you have somebody kind of nagging you as you're reaching for that next cookie, that's not gonna be great. So make sure that you have that converse, conversation and there's permission to do that. Um, I think we all have certain foods and drinks that we look forward to during the holidays. So perhaps you plan to have them and then you make sure to fill up on healthy foods and plenty of water so you feel good and then, and then really enjoy those special treats uh, that you look forward to. Move your body. So again, it's easy to fall out of routine during the holidays and that includes exercising and moving your body. Um, for some reason, and I am guilty of this for sure, when we're busy or when we're stressed, um, eating well and exercising seems to be the first thing uh, to go. And yet these are the things that can quickly make us feel better. So um, it's always surprising to me how easily we do this. So eating, drinking, sleeping, all of those things, moving our bodies, they are really quite simple and yet we so easily let them fall to the side. Um, so yeah, plan ahead. If you know that you have a holiday gathering, um, you know, then maybe you arrange your workouts around that. And, and a good tip is to get your workout in before you attend, because more than likely you're not going to do it after. So if you have a, a gathering, get up, get your workout in, you'll feel better for it. Uh, and then you can enjoy your, um, your activity, your gathering, knowing that you did a workout and getting outside. So yeah, again, I know that we live in Manitoba and it's cold out. It's quite cold this week. So I'm not suggesting that you spend a lengthy time freezing outside. However, I am suggesting that you enjoy the outdoors. Practice some gratitude for the amazing things around you. Enjoy the sun. We're very lucky that we get the sun year round. You know, have fun with your kids, maybe catching snowflakes on your tongue or go for a family walk or skate at some of the local rinks that we have. Um, and I'm a, I'm a dog lover. You know, I think many of us have dogs that need to be walked. So, you know, the fresh air is good for you and for your furry friends. So, um, you yeah. know, get outside. This little bit of outdoor time will leave you feeling refreshed and re-energized. It's a big one, make a budget. Uh, most people hate doing budgets. However, uh, a sure way to manage holiday stress in this area is to have a functional budget. So one of the leading causes of holiday stress is financial overstretch. So on top of buying gifts, there seems to be a never ending list of food and um, drinks and shopping lists that, that we need to get. So Prepare a budget reasonably and make sure you, you've done this early enough in the year if you want to hopefully like save the money to do that as well. And then stick to that budget. This will help you uh, avoid overspending and going into debt for the sake of the holiday season. That never feels great. Um, and as you're making a budget, this also might be a good time to again reevaluate your long list of people you buy for, uh, buy gifts for. So are there ways that you can trim that list down or get creative with your gifts? Um, a good example, years ago, um, my group of friends decided that we were no longer buying gifts for all the kids in our group. So as people started having more and more gifts, uh, this became unmanageable. So we decided to stop buying things for everyone. And instead, we started planning an experience for them. So sometimes it's a themed party at someone's house, like um, everybody wear white. We did that one year or everybody dress in their holiday pajamas. That's one that we're planning for next year, which I think would be pretty funny to see everybody walking around in pajamas. Uh, sometimes it's going for a sleigh ride or gathering outside for a fire and hot chocolate. So this is just a fun experience for everyone and it's much nicer on the wallet. Lots of families will do a gift exchange or a fun game. So you only have to buy one gift rather than buying for everyone. 
Um, and then of course there is the idea of making homemade gifts instead of buying them. So there's a lot of ways to show your appreciation for others over the holidays that doesn't have to include spending a lot of money. Uh, another side note is we just recently posted an article on the Manitoba Blue Cross blog about financial stress during the holiday season. So go ahead and check that out if this is an area that you're interested in learning more about. Treat yourself. So if you think the holidays are all about everyone else but yourself, it's time to shift that attitude. If you don't take good care of yourself, you might end up crashing and getting sick during, or often it'll happen after the holidays, right? So you, you made it through the holidays and then January rolls around and, and you're out and you're sick, right? So remember to have a good laugh with your loved ones during the holidays and create some space to, um, to, to do the things that you enjoy, okay? A great idea that I heard of uh, last year was buying yourself a gift. So something that you wanted but kept, you know, sort of pushing aside because you keep getting gifts for other people, wrap it up and make it a tradition that you get yourself something every year. It might be a physical gift or it might be an experience that you're craving. This gives you something to look forward to every year and, and you can be as specific as you want. You can act surprised when you open it up, <laughs> um, but you know, you do something that's for you, okay? I have, I have a friend that schedules an afternoon off every holiday season um, and where she goes to the spa and she gets a relaxing massage. So this time is sacred to her. She looks forward to every year. Um, and it also ties into these next two points that I wanna share with you. So here we are. So there, there's talking about breathing here. There's a reason deep breathing is one of the most common used stress management techniques. It works. There's lots of studies out there that show that this work and this tool is with you wherever you go. You always have it with you. Um, so taking time to take a step back, take some deep breaths and calm your mind will get you back on track when everything seems to be uh, out of hand. So, and then again, schedule some time just for you. This is the perfect time to listen to your favorite music, go for that massage that I mentioned earlier, watch your favorite movie, or just take a walk and listen to the birds chirp. Um, it can also help you to unplug, or it, it is helpful to unplug and take some time away from technology. Um, we're on screens all the time. It's really nice to take a break for that, from that. Um, so find a few moments to do this throughout the holiday season um, so the stress doesn't build up. Um, it can literally be 10 minutes, right? We're not saying that you need to plan an entire day, but it can be 10 minutes at a time. And, and I like to refer to this as taking a mindful break. So whether it's throughout your day, just take those 10 minutes, practice something mindfully. Intentionally, um, you know, pick up something that you wanna do for that break and make it a priority. One thing that I've started doing in the last few years is to save one of my vacation days for when my daughter's already gone back to school. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it can be busy. The kids are out of school, so it feels like they're around all the time. And so it's go, go, go. And so I save one of my vacation days and I take it in January when she's gone back to school. So this way I get a day completely to myself. I can unwind after the busy season and feel like I'm starting the new year in a more relaxed and settled state um, versus busy, 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 right back to work. So that's something that I've started to do and, and I find that it makes a big difference. Now, before we wrap up today, I'd love for you to share some of your own tips and tools on how you manage stress over the holidays. So again, um, I find that we learn so much from one another. So please share what works for you. Um, Again, I can't see the chat, but chat if you don't mind, if people are going to share some tips on how they manage holiday stress, um, maybe you could read some of those out loud for me. Absolutely. Uh, nothing yeah. about setting boundaries is one that just popped up, which I know is very oh, important. That's a good one. If anyone's having trouble accessing the uh, question feature, you can find it in the uh, GoToWebinar control panel. It's uh, what would have come up at the uh, side of your screen there, so you can enter it. You can enter the questions. There's a little section that says questions and you can enter any comments you have into there. So as I mentioned, we had the, the one regarding setting boundaries, uh, learning to learning to say no to something sometimes. That's obviously yep. very important. I know, uh, I think learning to say no is oftentimes uh, some of the, uh, one of the hardest things to do, like, especially when it comes to family, you don't wanna disappoint anyone. Yeah, and I know for people who have a hard time saying no, sometimes when we can reframe it in a way of, if you if you say no in this situation, it allows you to say yes to something else, right? You can create more space to say yes to something, which might be something for yourself, 
uh, or for your family members. But yeah, learning to say no is a hard one. We had uh, someone note that spending time with their uh, pets and animals is uh, is therapeutic for them, which is absolutely uh, yeah. We had uh, one person noted that outdoor activities are hard for them because of their glasses and inability to wear contacts. Any recommendations? Yeah. Um, sorry, I don't really know off the top of my head. Perhaps maybe uh, goggles. Um, That's what I was thinking. Yeah, goggles. I, I actually have a pair of goggles that I <laughs> that I wear when I go snow blowing that uh, fit directly over top of my glasses, and I'm able to. Uh, to uh to usually function quite well on them and they're uh they're uh ones that don't fog up so perhaps you oh. might want to try those i actually got those just off of amazon so uh there you go great tip. suggestion see this is what i love is when we start the chat and the conversation we all learn different things absolutely so we had uh one one uh, comment reduce 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 less commercial more games and leisure time i think that's that's great yeah i agree uh, we had uh, one comment here that I'll bring up, a, a more of a question that I can bring up when we get to the uh, question and answer section. Uh, debriefing overwhelming feelings with a friend, always important for sure. Talking to others, again, sort of in that same uh, same theme. Also, just take a short nap if you have time, which I think is uh, certainly important. Yeah, some people love naps and the holiday season is a great time to do that. Yeah. Another comment, get plenty of sleep, which falls right into that same uh, same vein. Yeah, so no, lots of good suggestions there. Great, thank you all for sharing. And uh, and yeah, thank you for joining today. I, I hope that it was a nice little break in your day and that there were some small tips or ideas on how to manage some of the overwhelm of the holiday season. Um, absolutely, I'm open to any questions or comments if we have any. Um, and also just as a side note, please note that if you are experiencing any sort of mental health struggles during the holidays or any time, um, reach out for help. You all have Manitoba Blue Cross coverage, which means you can use that Connect Now and, and talk with somebody immediately if you need, or you can call our intake line to set up a counseling session with uh, the EAP program, well, Employee Assistance Program. So I said P twice, but I've, uh, so I put the number on the slide there for you. That's great. So idea. yeah, any questions or comments, Chad? I'm happy to to answer or to chat no that's great we we did have one uh could you elaborate a little further on how to set and follow up with boundaries without feeling guilt like that? Uh, i think that's uh, uh, uh like we discussed a little bit ago that's uh, an important thing because uh it is tough to say no and set boundaries with your family and feel as though you're uh, you're disappointing them yeah so i think that's about acknowledging for yourself um what's important how you're feeling during this time sharing that with your loved ones um and by doing that again it's it's allowing you to to set that stage uh to say hey this time of year is hard for me um i get quite exhausted whether you want to share you know your reasons but then putting in those boundaries and saying you know for that reason um we're we're only going to be able to attend until this time or it's really important for us as a family to spend time together so Finding ways to acknowledge it for yourself, to share that with others. Uh, you don't have to over justify it. Uh, it is okay to say, you know, this is what I have the energy for, the capacity for. And so it it's hard to start doing that. And once you do start doing that, it, it's actually quite liberating. It feels quite good to do that. And people respect that. Uh, there, I mean, there's gonna be some family members who maybe don't and pressure you. And so it's gonna be about practicing having conversations with people, having conversations with yourself. Also, if you do, you can always uh, speak with a counselor or a therapist and role, you know, role play that, try that out, work out a script or a way to approach that. Because um, for some people, it's much harder than others. And some families put a lot more pressure than others. And, and so practicing that, uh, it takes time. Yeah, I think absolutely the, the idea of practicing is important because uh, I know in, in past having uh, worked a bit worked with the Addictions Foundation, uh, we've discussed that in some of our uh, our materials. That even when uh, when it comes to you know people who are having substance use challenges and going into scenarios where they know that it might be uh, they may be uh, you know encountering substances or people using substances, to make sure that they're able to say no and that they practice that ahead. So I think that the same holds true very much for the for the stress aspect and for dealing with your family. 
Yeah. And you might even want to start practicing that on a smaller scale, right? Like, so smaller things that are easier to do and you build yourself up to maybe those bigger situations where you put those boundaries in. Right. We had one question re regarding the uh, phone number here. Uh, yep. This program intake line, is that the same number that connects you with Connect Now? Yes. Yeah. So our intake workers uh, who are mental health professionals answer that line. So they'd be happy to speak to people who need to talk immediately for that Connect Now. Uh, or if you wanted to uh, say, hey, I would like to start an intake in order to schedule a counseling session with a therapist. So it's the same number. Great. Uh, not see. Oh, sorry. I, I was just going to say not seeing any questions, but uh, we do have what we had one just pop up. Somebody okay. has asked if you could send along that not so happy holidays article, perhaps if you sure. could. Yeah, I can provide both of those articles that I mentioned, the not so happy and the financial one. Um, we'll talk chat after as to who I should send those to, but I can provide those and then you, you're welcome to distribute them. Right. Actually, uh, so if anyone is interested, if you want to send an email to the uh, Winnipeg Courses email that is uh, uh, linked to this, uh, to the GoToWebinar platform, uh, if you, you want to send an email, I can uh, uh, I can then uh, relay that article once I receive it from Carmel. Okay. If anyone else has any other questions, we'll, uh, we'll give a couple uh, more moments here to, to enter them. That's good. Thank you to everybody who was uh, getting in on the chat and, uh, and interacting. That made uh, made for a great session. Yeah, I love that. I love when people are sharing. Like I said, we learn so much from each other, and and often it's really nice to to see. Oh, other people are feeling that way. Um, sometimes we think it's just us. Same with this not so happy holiday time. A lot of people suffer with thinking that it's only them that doesn't like this time of year. And again, there's. People will call you a Scrooge or, or you know, say bah humbug, and, and that's not helpful uh, because it can be a very tough time of year for many people. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, I'm not seeing any more questions, but so uh, maybe we'll uh, we'll end things there. But I just want to say again, thank you for the uh, presentation today, Carmel, and uh, yeah, I think very informative. Lots of good tips, uh, lots of good comments, and sense tips that are that uh, people can use. I think that uh, that's the important part is just you know things that are, are grounded in, you know, our everyday lives that people can use. So I, I appreciate that. And I, I, you know, judging by the questions, I think everybody else does as well. So thank you very much yes, for sometimes that. Sometimes we just need the reminders, right? So yeah, take absolutely. care, everybody. Thank you for joining and uh, happy holidays. Great. Thank you to everybody who joined us today. Hope you have a, a good rest of the day and a happy holiday season. Bye.